Hello, everyone. Welcome to this class. My name is Ryan Daniel Moran. I want to welcome those of you who are new to the capitalism.com community, who are new to my work, who may have read my book, 12 Months to 1 Million, and you've been looking for a way to interact with me a little bit closer. I want to say a special welcome to those who are in the green room. Those are the people who got here really early and are pending to have hot seats. I see you, Skylar, pumping your fist. I will be going uh, live with Q&A with those in the green room at the end of this call. For those of you who are new to our brand new community called The Road to One Million, I want to say welcome to you. If you have completed your homework assignments that I have given you in that group, I'll be bringing some of you on live to look at your work and to help you map out your million dollar plan. If you would, do me a favor and just say hello in the comments. It, it, this is an interactive class. So I'm going to be asking you questions throughout this presentation and throughout this class to invite you to come up with some ideas, to invite you to brainstorm some different things and ways that you can apply what I will be teaching you. I see you, Rouse. What's up? Is that Ryan Rouse? Good to see you. Hey, Josh. Hey, Alan. Hey, Dave. Hey, Rhino, good to see you. Hey, Jacob. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, Will. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Lisa. Good to see all of you. Oh, it's Carrie Rouse, of course. My apologies, Carrie Rouse. Good to see you. And it was good hanging out with you last week. Carrie is in our Capitalist Pigs Mastermind, and we hung out and played touch football and pickleball and basketball last week. Hey, Malcolm, good to see you. Is anyone here new to my work. You found me on YouTube recently. You read my book recently. You found some of our content. You got plugged into our community and you wanted to attend this class. Is anyone new to my work or the work of capitalism.com? I would just like to welcome you and to say hello. Hey, Pratik. Glad that you made it. Hi, Jamie. Hi, Michael. Hi, Evan. Hey, everybody watching on YouTube. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. I appreciate you. So I am going to teach you some things that I have never taught publicly before because most of my work is focused on helping people build million dollar businesses. I wrote a book called 12 Months to 1 Million and I sadly gave away my copy uh, just a few days ago. Hi, Mark Miller. Nice to see you. Uh, sadly, I gave away my copy that I had near, uh, near me. Um, but my book is called 12 Months to 1 Million. I'm best known for turning a $600 investment into a company that was valued at $16 million. I didn't get all of that money at the end of the day. That's a story for another day. I actually bought back the company after I exited it and am now documenting the rebuild of that business publicly. But I'm also well known for teaching the model of building seven-figure businesses and helping hundreds of people to execute that plan and successfully build businesses that did at least a million dollars in revenue. Some of my students have gone on to build $5 million businesses, $10 million businesses. I do have a student, I have actually a couple students that have built businesses that did in excess of $100 million in a year or sold their business for over $100 million. But my Heart and my focus is really on helping entrepreneurs carve out their road to 1 million, building towards the path of a million dollars. The reason for that is because when I was a kid, um, my father was a school teacher. My mom was a stay-at-home mom until they separated and then she went back to work. But my, my father was a school teacher and he made about $40,000 a year at the time. And he told me, we were talking about how much a million dollars was, right? I was you know, seven or eight years old. I don't know how much a million dollars is. And he told me, Ryan, if I were to work my entire career for 30 years and I were to never spend a dime, not spend any money, I would have about a million dollars. Now, if you run those numbers, a school teacher making $40,000 a year times 30 years, that would be $1.2 million, right? Now we're of course not factoring in taxes. We're not factoring in, you know, any expenses. But at that moment, I just some I was like, okay, I want to become a millionaire. Like that sounds ridiculous to have to work your whole life and have just to have this goal of having a million dollars. I want to have I just I just want to find a way. 
And that was what started my journey of figuring out how wealth works. And no one was there to teach me how that worked. Uh, no one was there to carve out a road for me. And so I am sort of become obsessed with helping the next generation create their road to 1 million, their path to a million dollars. And it doesn't have to take 30 years. It can, but it doesn't have to. I, I have plenty of students who make over a million dollars a year and there, there are ways to do it. And so what, what, I, what I want you to know is that if you do what I'm going to show you in this class, there's a pretty strong chance you're going to become a millionaire. Maybe not next year, maybe not in two years, maybe not even in five years. But once you see what I'm going to carve out for you in this class, you're going to say, okay, like it's pretty hard not to do this. Now, you don't have to do it, but if you do it, it's a pretty strong chance that you're going to come out with at least a million dollar net worth. I'm going to prove it to you by running some numbers and you're just going to go like, my, you're going to have, you're going to have what we call the brain gasm. Uh, I can almost guarantee it. And one of the ways that we give applause on these classes is we put hashtags in the comments. So do me a favor. Let's practice. Pretend that I just said something amazing. Wow, you look incredible today. Put some hashtags in the comments so that I can see that you understand how this game works. Tyler gets it. Josh gets it. Skylar gets it. Kelsey understands. Susan understands. Dave understands. I see you, Ivan. I see there's Lisa. There's Michael. <laughs> there's Sarah. There's Tiffany. All right, good. You guys, Rhino gets it. Carrie gets it. Douglas gets it. Okay, Will gets it. All right, you guys understand how this works. So if you, if you see, if you have a light bulb come on, we put hashtags in the comments. It means I got it. Another way that you can do this, if you have a really big aha moment, you can put hashtag braingasm in the comments. That's braingasm. It's like an orgasm, but for your brain. It's an aha moment that you get. So hashtag braingasm is how we say, oh, I get it now. I understand. I just had a thought I never had before. I get it now. So I made this class for my younger self because I wanted to know what the, the road to 1 million looked like. I wanted to know how I could become a millionaire. No one was there to teach me. This was before the internet. This is before you could access, or access mentors like me who have made millions of dollars. In my career, I've made tens of millions of dollars. I've also made mistakes that cost me millions of dollars. And there's never been, in my experience, anybody who was there really mapping out the plan. And so I really built this, this class, this course for my younger self. So this is my way of giving back to my younger self and hoping that he avoids some of the pitfalls. Now I can't go back at least with today's technology and actually give it to my younger self. So I will have to give it to you and live vicariously through you. In some ways, for those of you who are just starting, hey, Nathan from Austin, Texas, what part of town are you in? I'm in Austin, Texas too. In, uh, um, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, if you are new, if you are early on your journey to building wealth, I'm sort of envious of you because you can only have that beginning braingasm, that beginning freshness one time. Once you get it, it becomes totally normal. And I live for those aha moments, those braingasms where people get it because my vision, my mission at my company, which is capitalism.com is to help a million people become millionaires. A million people that have a million dollar net worth through my content, my courses, my trainings, the opportunities that I bring to the table. And I'm going to do it because I'm very confident that once you see the model, you're not going to be able to unsee it. And there will be a very logical, methodical, predictable path and plan to becoming a millionaire. And I need to get this to as many people as possible to create a million millionaires. Why a million millionaires? Because if you have a million people who have real financial freedom, who know how to carve a route for their own life, who are able to live life on purpose, you need less government. You need less government programs. You need fewer handouts. 
You are less likely to be manipulated by the media. You are less likely to be working a job you hate. So you're going to be a more present parent. You're going to be a more intentional friend. You're going to be a more charitable giving person. And those ripple effects go on for generations. A million people is the tipping point. There's actually something called a, the Maharishi effect. The Maharishi effect says that if you can impact 0.1% of a population that it actually changes the consciousness of the entire population. If you can change the beliefs or the status or the imprint, the thoughts of 0.1% of a population, it's the tipping point to spread the rest to the rest of the population. So my goal is to impact that 0.1 to 1% of people. It's one of the reasons why our mentoring program is called the 1% because if we can create that tipping point for 1% of the population, we actually change the rest of the population. And for me, that's a million people, a million people with a million dollar net worth. That's a trillion dollars created. That would be the impact of Bitcoin at its peak. That's exciting to me. So if you do what I share with you in this class, Let's see, there's 100 of you on this class. There's a pretty good chance that 100 of you are going to become millionaires. Now, we're going to start this with a question. On a scale of 1 to 10, and please put this in the comments. On a scale of 1 to 10. Hi, Luis. Hi, Ozzy. I see you guys. I see your comments. Hey, Nathan in Southwest Austin. Wave to me next time you see me on uh, 71 heading to Lakeway. All right, so on a scale of one to 10, please answer this question in the comments. Scale of one to 10, how strongly do you believe that you can become a millionaire? Give me a number. Oh, oh, and you can't choose seven. You can't say seven. Everyone says seven. You can't say seven. I'm seeing a lot of tens. This is actually surprising to me. I see a lot of tens. I guess if you're on a class about how to become a millionaire, you at least believe you can, right? There's pro <laughs> If you really don't believe that you can become a millionaire, you're probably not going to go to a class on how to do it. Okay, so this is actually an interesting teaching point for me because I didn't expect the answers. It's almost all tens. Guys, I think the lowest I saw was Josh who wanted to be an ass and he put seven. <laughs> All right, I see a couple sixes. All right, that's, so that's the lowest. So that's interesting. Now, the, the, the way the brain works, I'm fascinated by human psychology. I, I, I love politics and religion because it says so much about human psychology, the things that we believe. And I want you to remember this. The way the brain works is the following. We see what we believe, not the other way around. As evidenced by the fact that those of you who are here put, someone asked, is it live? No, this is not live. I have gone into the future and I've put your comment on this screen. Yeah, that technology exists now. Almost all of you put, eight, nines, and tens as your confidence for how likely you are to become a millionaire. And thus you are here. Now, if you believed one or two, chances are you would have never resonated with my work. You would have never bought a book called 12 Months to 1 Million. You'd have never found my podcast. You'd have never joined our mentoring program called The 1%. You wouldn't have a goal of having a million dollar business. If you believe it is not possible, your brain will filter out anything it believes to be untrue or impossible. For example, we can use politics as a great example. If you ask a group of hardcore Democrats to name three good things that Republicans have done in the last 24 months, most of the time they will struggle and vice versa. Because we see what we believe rather than the other way around. 
Most of us believe that we are logical, that we come to our beliefs by carefully sifting through the information and then coming to a very logical and rational judgment. That is not true. We come to our conclusions emotionally and then we justify them with logic. This is how the brain works. Everyone that I talked about is like, no, no, maybe other people, but not me. No, you too came to your beliefs emotionally and then you justified them logically. So if you believe that becoming a millionaire is impossible, if you believe that rich people are evil, if you believe that making money is hard, then your brain will go out and find evidence to that. It will say things like, I can't quit my job because making money is hard and the world is scarce. Therefore, I'm going to cling to this job. In fact, I might not even ask for a raise because that might put me as a threat to this company and I might lose my job and I don't want to do that because making money is hard and opportunities are scarce. So your brain finds evidence for the belief and then it continues to perpetuate the belief that it already has. So if you want to look at what your beliefs are, just look at your life. Look at your life as it is. And it is a beautiful reflection of what your beliefs are because we are constantly having our beliefs reflected back to us. What do you think about money? What do you think about the president? What do you think about your friends? What do you think about relationships? It is all being reflected back to us. Changing beliefs is hard. And so the first thing that I would encourage you to do on your road to 1 million is to gently start to put yourself in a position to shift your beliefs so that you start to see opportunities. One of the ways that you can do that is by surrounding your brain with thoughts and other people who have already done that. Because you may have noticed this, that when you hang out with different people, your beliefs start to shift. So if all you did throughout this class was to go on YouTube and subscribe to a couple of channels that are about making millions of dollars or from successful business people, and you read a few books, and then three months from now, ask yourself the question again, how confident am I that I can become a millionaire? That would be a good use of your time. You would start to shift your sights and then you'd find different evidence to justify the beliefs that you have. The question that I asked you about your confidence of becoming a millionaire is oftentimes the most predictable, uh, it's the number one predictor for if someone is going to do it. So if you said six or eight or less than six, or you thought something lower, your, like your first job is to start to shift those beliefs. And what I'm going to do throughout this class is give you a few examples and a few logical arguments that are going to poke holes in your doubt so that it unlocks that next thing for you. So let's jump in right now. There are Two steps to building a really high net worth, to becoming wealthy. Now, I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but most people know these two steps. They just don't do them. In fact, most people don't do either of them. A lot of people who think they're good only do one of them and they fail as a result. It takes doing both of these and I will explain why. The two steps are to start a profitable business and to invest the profits for long-term growth. Start a profitable business and to invest the profits for long-term growth. Again, I don't mean to insult your intelligence. This is nothing new to any of you, but there are very few people who do both of these. I know many people Many people who make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars a year and they are broke. They are broke. I have a friend who made $10 million eight or nine years ago. He lost all of it. All of it. 
had to start completely over. You've probably heard many stories like that. And the reason is because they did number one, but they did not do number two. Number two being invest for long-term growth. There are people who invest for long-term growth, but they never start a business. So they only have a little bit to chip away at. And they oftentimes outpace the people who make a lot of money and don't invest it. So I'm going to focus on the second piece first, the investing for long-term growth. And here's why. My, I, I have a family member, my uncle Tom, who told me something when I was 14 or 15 years old. And it always stuck with me. And he said, being rich, becoming wealthy is not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep. Making money and keeping money are different. Making money is part one. Start a profitable business. Keeping money is step two. Investing for long-term growth. That's what keeping money is. It means taking the dollar, putting it somewhere where it will grow, and doing it again. Part one, part two. Part one, part two. It's about how much money you keep, not how much money you make. Now, let me ask you a question, and I want you to write this in the chat. Actually, before I go there, actually, no, I'm going to ask you this question and then I'm going to give you the answer later. The question is, if you were to invest in the stock market, the broad-based stock market, you weren't picking stocks, you were just to put it in the market. And there were, you got the average return from the last five, 50 years. How much would you need to invest every month to become a millionaire in 30 years? So if you were willing to wait 30 years, and I know none of you want to wait 30 years. Don't worry. We're going to get there way faster. Okay. But if you waited 30 years and you invested into the stock market at its average rate of return for the last 50 years, how much would you need to invest every month in order to become a millionaire. Haley Barrett has watched my content before. <laughs> I will give you the answer here in approximately four minutes. Now, let me share with you something that I taught at an event recently that was mostly very successful people. These were mostly seven-figure entrepreneurs. And I said this and people went, I see the answer to the matrix now. This is a writer downer. There are three types of money. When we say money, we are talking about one of three things. And sometimes we say money as a catch-all, but we mean something else. There are three types of money. The first is cash flow. Now, most of you know what that is. If you don't know what that is, you're probably in the wrong room. It's the extra money that you have after paying expenses. Money that comes in the door that is profit, cash flow. Number two is wealth. Wealth is the earnings you make without working. Wealth is what grows without you. These are the things that you invest in that grow whether you're working or not. That's wealth. And the third is enterprise value. Or just to shorten it, you could say value. This is the amount of cash that you would produce if you sold all of your assets. If you were to sell your house, if you were to sell your business, your company, the things that you've invested in, that is value, enterprise value. When we talk about money, most people are only talking about cash flow. 
That's great. That's a good place to start. You want to make more money. That's, I want more cash flow. Then there's, I want to build wealth. I want to build wealth that will grow for a very long time. And then the most mature business people think about value, enterprise value. They think about building businesses that they can sell. I was reading about the person who bought Snapple. They bought it for $30 million. And two years later, they sold it for $1.7 billion. It's a good return, I guess. That's enterprise value. That's Now, here is, here is the brain twister here. The more you can focus on building value, the faster you will grow your wealth and your cash flow. Now, obviously, this is an extreme example, but the person who bought Snapple for $30 million, sold it for 1.7, they focus on enterprise value. So now their wealth is much higher and they can invest into lots of things that grow their cash flow in two years. Now, again, obviously, this is an extreme example, but the, the more you can focus on the enterprise value, the value of a business, that first part, remember that start a business, a profitable business, the more you focus on that, the more that you will naturally check the box of wealth and cash flow. Now, if we go backwards, this is also true. The more you focus on wealth, the faster you'll grow your cash flow. You may not grow your enterprise value, but the more you focus on your wealth, the more you will, you will grow your cash flow. Going in the other order doesn't necessarily work. Saying I will make more cash flow so I can build my wealth and then build my enterprise value is not as true as the opposite. This is totally flying in the face of what most people think about and teach. Most people think about I will grow my cash flow and then I will invest it. And then finally later I'll grow the company that I want that I can sell. The more you can flip it, and I know if you're early in your journey, this is hard. Think about like, I mean, can I build a business I can sell? Like, I know that's hard, but let's take it one step back. If you think about growing wealth over the long term, the faster you will increase your cash flow. Now, we will talk about increasing your cash flow. It is a necessary part of this process, but I first want to focus on the building of wealth. So... Let's do this the slow way first. I ask you the question, how much, of, how much money would you need to invest consistently in order to have a million dollar net worth over 30 years? Well, does anyone here know, put it in the comments, what is the average return of the stock market for the last 50 years? Now, average return, I'm talking about the S&P 500, which is the oldest index fund, it's the simplest way to invest in the stock market. It's investing in the top 500 companies on an index fund. It's basically three clicks in your E-Trade account. It's the simplest way. It's the way that Warren Buffett says most people should invest. Warren Buffett says most people would be way better off if they didn't try to pick stocks if they just invested in broad-based index funds like the S&P 500. So you guys are in the realm. I'm seeing as low as 6% and as high as 12%. The average is 9.4%. 9.4% per year. Now, this takes into account recessions, boom times. In fact, if you had bought the S&P 500 at the peak of 2007, before the crash, the worst time ever to invest. The worst time ever to invest. After one year, you would have been down about 60 to 70%. That hurts. But today, you'd be up two and a half times. Imagine that. I mean, if you had bought at the worst time to invest ever, you would be up about two and a half times now. So $100,000 would now be $250,000. If you had invested right before the crash, 
of 2008. So the more that you are in consistently into broad-based, simple index funds, the better off you'll be, according to Warren Buffett. So knowing that the average return is 9.4%, if you were to put a consistent amount of money into the S&P 500 at 9.4%, now we don't know if it's going to do 9.4% consistently going forward, but it that's the average over the last 50 years. 50 years, that's 1973, which was not a good time in the economy. The 70s were not fun for investing. So this takes into account the 70s. It takes into account the crash in the 80s. It takes into account the dot-com bust. It takes into account the 2008 Great Recession. It takes all of that into account. We still had 9.4% average return. We don't know if it's going to be better or worse, but the average over 50 years has been 94 how much would we need to invest into that at 9.4% every month consistently for 30 years to have a million dollars? The answer is, you want to know? The answer is $541. $541. Now, is there anyone here who can't make $541 a month and invest it. I mean, I wrote a couple of ideas. <laughs> it, I mean, you could drive for Uber for five hours a week. Five hours a week. Now, you probably don't want to drive for Uber for an extra five hours a week. But if this was your million dollar plan, your million dollar plan is like, I'm going to make $541 a month. I'm going to invest that. And then my million dollar plan. Can you imagine how much excitement you would show up to every ride? My million dollar plan, million dollar plan. I'm driving for Uber for $5 for five hours a week. So I can make $541 and I'm going to invest this. Now I know I know you're thinking inflation, you're thinking federal reserve, you're thinking you're thinking all these things. Look, it's a million bucks. If you're shooting for a million bucks, you're going to be better off than most people. Still to this day, only 1% of the world ever becomes a millionaire. 1%. 1%. So put your doubt and your stipulations aside for a second. Can you make $541 per month. Here's a few things you could do. You could drive for Uber for five hours a week. You could start the smallest of side hustles ever. You could flip stuff on eBay. You could ask for a raise. You could sell stuff laying around your house. You could reduce your expenditures. These are all things that you could do very reasonably and make $541 a month and invest it, and you'd be on the road to a million. You'd become a millionaire by driving for Uber. Now, of course, no one does it. Why is that? Because most of the people who are making less amounts of money than they want are constantly thinking about how they don't have enough money, how there's never enough money, how they wish they had more, and how nobody that they know has enough money, rather than saying, I wonder how much it would take for me to become a millionaire. Can you imagine how much energy you would show up for every ride if you were in like in an Uber and you'd be like, my million dollar plan. My next, my, this is my next ride on my road to a million. You would be pumped. So this is why I want to show you this up front because now you know you can become a millionaire. You can. I can't make you invest $541 a month. I can't make you do that. But I'll tell you what, there is such a different energy in the people that I work with who are showing up like another step on my road to a million. It's another step. It's another thing I'm going to do. Completely different energy than the person who was like, man, I hope this works. God, I've tried so many things and they've all failed. 
I've invested so much money into courses, into programs, into gurus, into books, and I'm still a failure. I'll always be a failure. I know this is going to fail too. Completely different energy. So think of that Uber driver who's there going, there's never enough money. There's never enough money. I hate that I'm driving for Uber. Versus the girl who's showing up like, no, the ride on my road to a million. I call it my ride to a million, not the road to a million. Is pumped. That person is going to get better reviews, bigger tips on Uber, is going to get more surge pricing. Yeah, that's right. You're contributing to my ride to a million. So your beliefs change the way you show up, which change the results that you get. I've just shown you that if you make $541 a month and invest it into the most boring ass way ever to invest in 30 years, you're a millionaire. So what's the chances that you're going to become a millionaire? It's, it's no longer zero. I'll tell you that. It's actually fairly likely if you do it. Now, of course, none of you want to wait 30 years. Okay, Mr. Podcast Capitalist, man. I don't want to wait 30 years. I know. I get, we're getting there. Gosh. So how do we get there faster? How do we get there as fast? How do we plow as much money as possible? into what we keep so that we build the wealth part of the equation, the wealth type of money. If we focus on building that, the cash flow will take care of itself. And if we can occasionally dip into thinking about value, enterprise value, the faster we'll build our wealth and our cash flow. Most people are doing it backwards, folks. They're thinking about, I wish I could make more money. They're doing it backwards. Think about wealth and enterprise value if you can get your brain to go there and that will solve your cash flow problem. So let's go there. Uh, how many of you, give me a yes or a no in the comments, have you ever read The 4-Hour Work Week? Came out in like 2009, written by Tim Ferriss. It's a good book. So give me a yes in the comments if you've read 4-Hour Workweek. It's actually about 50-50. Interesting. Great. It's a great book. It is basically a lifestyle planning book. Tim Ferriss wrote a book about prioritization, time management, so that you can live the life of the super rich, even if you are not super rich. So we talked about calculating how much money you would need to live your ideal life. He talks about how to make that. It, this was before remote work was common. So some of his ideas were, were fairly novel at the time because he was talking about working remotely. Well, in the book, The 4-Hour Work Week, he talks about, it, it, was, it actually fascinates me how little attention this got in the book. He talks about the best way to build a business. Does, any, does anybody know what it is? Can anybody remember anybody who watched it? Can they think of what did Tim Ferriss say was the best way to build a business? Half the book was about this and no one got it. <laughs> like no, no one remembers this part. I'll give you five more seconds. <laughs> Some of you are like, uh, um, wait, I should know this. Half the book is about this. All right. Ed got it. Ed got it. Ed, you're my favorite person today. It was product creation. Product creation. Now, a bunch of different business models can be simple down, simplified down into product creation. You could start a software and sell it. You could write a book and sell it. You could create a physical product and sell it. You could sell products on Amazon. You can write, create a course and sell it. You can create a community and sell. These are all products. So product creation is the way that is the best way to start a business. And Tim talked about the business that he started. It was a supplement called Brain Quicken. And it was, I think, two products. I think he had Brain Quicken and Body Quicken. And he had, you know, a simple business that took its sales and made enough for him to live his ideal life. Well, my formula 
that I teach in my book is if you have four products and they sell 25 sales a day, that's a hundred sales a day. So if all we did was get four products to get to 25 sales a day, which is very, very reasonable. 25 sales a day is very, very reasonable. You can get there in about 90 days. So that's why my book is called 12 Months to 1 Million because you can get a product to 25 sales a day in about 90 days. Do that four times over the course of the year. That's 100 sales a day. At a $30 price point, that's $3,000 a day or a million dollar business. Now, this is these are all very reasonable because $25 is not that high of a price point. It's only four products and it's only 25 sales a day. So these are all very reasonable numbers to hit. If you take a page out of Tim Ferriss's book, which is called The 4-Hour Workweek, you combine it with a page out of my book, which is called 12 Months to 1 Million. My formula is four products, 25 sales a day at a $30 price point. That's $3,000 a day, which is $90,000 a month, which is $1.095 million, I think. So just over a million dollars. Now, here's a trivia question. What if you only had one product doing 25 sales a day at $30? What does that math break down to? This is not a trick question. Some of you are running the numbers. That's just a quarter of a million dollars. Oh, numbers are interesting. Yeah. There we go, Skylar. Skylar got it. Tyler got the exact number, $273,750. Okay, I, I would have accepted $250, okay? <laughs> That's what I was going here for. So that would be $250,000 in top line revenue. Now, if this is a physical product like a supplement or something you need to fulfill, obviously you're going to have cost of goods in there. But if this is an info product or a book, most of that is going to be profit. Most of that's going to be profit. So when we talk about just selling any product, whether it's a software or it's a community or it is a, a, a digital product, those are very high profit margins. If it's a physical product, it's going to be lower, lower profits, but you're going to have higher volume in most cases. So let's just assume that it is $250,000 in profit. Here's another question for you. Is $250,000 more or less than $541 a month? Also not a trick question. Come on, come on. Wow, okay. We're going to need to take a break for a joke because only one person got it. And it was Kelsey Orcutt. Kelsey, you are now my favorite person. <laughs> Forget that other former favorite person. Kelsey got it. I like this YouTube username. Oh, I missed it. Side Gig University. I, I like your YouTube name. Just wanted to tell you. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. You weren't fast enough. You didn't get back. You didn't. You didn't answer fast enough, Ed. You've lost. You've lost your post of my favorite of my favorite person today. So, in case you were unaware, two hundred fifty thousand dollars is more than five hundred forty one dollars a month. All of this to say that if you literally did a quarter of what I teach in my book, and you only got one product to twenty five sales a day. You've got the smallest of side gigs. You literally could do it in 90 days. Literally could do it. And you would have way more than you need to be on the road to 1 million. Now, of course, if you can get to 25 sales a day or what would be a six-figure business in 90 days, even if it took a year, you're going to want to grow that over the long term. You're going to want to invest more. So your path to a million is starting to get faster and faster. That's why it's two steps, not one. That's why it is start a profitable business and invest the profits. When you think about the investing the profits part, you start to realize, oh, this could get really big. And now you build the business so you can put as much money as possible into that investment plan and you're a millionaire. Done. You could, 
likely do it in a few years. Some people do it faster than that. For other people, it takes 10, 15 years. But do you care if you have absolute knowing that you're on the road to 1 million? This is the interesting thing that I've noticed about the people that I teach. When they have an absolute knowing that they're on the right path, they follow the path and the path works. When they have doubt, when they have they wonder if it's going to work or not, they find a way to screw it up. This is why I spent so much time on this class taught working you up to this understanding that you only need $541 a month to have a million dollars. It'll take 30 years, but you know that it's going to work. The person who drives for Uber on their route to becoming a millionaire in 30 years writes a book, How I Became a Millionaire writing, Driving for Uber. And everybody thinks it's freaking cool. And they know that they're going to do it. And as a result, they show up with a different energy and they make it happen even faster. The same is true for you if you have absolute knowing that you only need the smallest of side things to make enough money to be on the road to 1 million. And when you know that, you'll get there quickly and then you'll want to grow it. That's how I can identify a millionaire in the making. When they're like, I absolutely know this is going to work because all it really needs to make is $541 a month. And since I have absolute knowing that it's going to do that, it's going to happen faster and bigger. And only if I only do a quarter of what Ryan talks about in his book, which is having four products at 25 sales a day at a $30 price point, if I only do 25% of that, I'm doing way more than the $541 that I need to be able to invest. So I am thus on the road to 1 million. I am a millionaire in the making. So um, how many, let's do, let's do an example of this. So Tiffany brings up an interesting point first, before I give an example. Tiffany says, simple but not easy, but it kind of is easy. If you allow yourself to believe that it is easy, because all I got to do is have $541 a month invested in the simplest way possible, it's kind of hard not to, it's, it's kind of hard to not do. The only reason why you wouldn't is because you have bullshit thoughts that it won't work for some reason. It's the only reason. Only reason. And then if you know it's going to work, which we just ran the most simple numbers ever, then you show up with the energy that it, and you create, you create it. And it happens. Oh, I'm so glad that I got this. You helped me change my mindset a year ago from one of your videos talking about fear of failure and finding supporting evidence. Amen. How much evidence can you find that becoming a millionaire is freaking inevitable? I mean, if you don't have this by this time in the class, I think you fell asleep. And that makes me really sad because I'm showing up with the heat and you fell asleep. All right, so there's a case study I want to draw your attention to. Remember the three types of money, cash flow, wealth, enterprise value? And I told you that if you focus on enterprise value and wealth, the cash flow will take care of itself. I mentioned Tim Ferriss earlier in his book, The 4-Hour Workweek. Well, inside of Tim's books, he mentions a lot of products that he likes. And as a result of him talking about it, people find these products and they buy them often. Well, there's a product that he recommended called Athletic Greens. Have any of you ever heard of this product, Athletic Greens? Give me a yes in the comments if you've heard of this one. It's recently changed its name to AG1, but for many years it was called Athletic Greens. Sarah knows about it. <laughs> Kelsey says, I hear about it all the damn time. Jess has seen it. All right, cool. So Lance takes it. Cool. Josh has seen it. All right. F a few of you. Fewer, uh, fewer than I thought. But Athletic Greens is a greens powder. I actually have greens powder in my water right now. It's not Athletic Greens. It's actually one of my students' uh, greens powders. They're called um, uh, fresh, fresh pressed juice. Fresh pressed juiced, fresh pressed juice. Sorry, Annie. <laughs> um, the Athletic Greens product 
a lot of people don't know this. So this is this is a this is going to blow some of you away. Um, Athletic Greens was talked about in Tim Ferriss's book, The Four Hour Body, and as a result of Tim mentioning it, a lot of people went out and bought this product. But when Tim wrote the book, Athletic Greens did not exist. The product had not launched. I know, Haley, crazy, right? The product had not launched. It didn't exist. Chris, the founder, Chris Ashenden, and Tim Ferriss were homies. Chris had this side project where he was developing a greens powder and Tim had tried the first like sample units, but the business hadn't launched. The product hadn't launched. Tim liked the product enough to recommend it in his book because he knew Chris was going to launch it. And Chris, this is a funny story. I interviewed Chris on my podcast and he told me this uh, on the podcast. You can go look it up and listen to it if you'd like. Chris was going to change the name of the business. He wasn't going to call it Athletic Greens. And Tim said, sorry, the book already went to print. So Chris had to market the company as Athletic Greens for like 10 years because he didn't change it in time for Tim's book to go to print. So that was the initial launch of this product was an author mentioned it in his book and Athletic Greens was born. That's how simple that business was. Now, last year, a news article came out and it announced that Athletic Greens had raised funding that valued the company at over a billion dollars. Billion with a B. It started as something that Tim Ferriss recommended in a book because Chris couldn't change the name fast enough. And then it was valued at over a billion dollars. And you see it all over the freaking place now. That is crazy to think about. Now, think about this. Chris, the founder of Athletic Greens, growing a company with one product, one main product. He had some other side products, but it was mostly one product. With one product launched to a small audience, became a billion dollar company. Is that thinking about cash flow or enterprise value? It's enterprise value. I see you, Josh. So that enterprise value grew to over a billion dollars. Do you think that Chris needs to worry about cash flow ever again? Nah. Nah. He's going to be fine, guys. You don't need to worry about Chris. He's going to be fine. So he had, he followed Tim's playbook. He built a product. He got it to some sales. He built a business and he made a lot of money. He did it by focusing on enterprise value. And now he'll have all the wealth and all the cash flow he could ever need. Now you probably are not going to build a billion dollar company and you don't need to. If you want to have a multi-million dollar net worth, you need to have a profitable business that does reasonably well. And the best way to do that is to have a product that sells consistently, produces profit, and for you to invest that for wealth. Start a profitable business, invest for long-term wealth. So let's do a little assignment. Hi, Haley's dog. Uh, Haley, you're going to like this assignment since you're holding a dog right now. Earlier today, as I was preparing the notes for this class, I made a list of 10 things around me just that I could see that I had purchased at one time. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to take one minute and either write down or type out, just look around you right now, 10 things that you bought online or at the store. That's going to be most things. Okay. So look around you right now. Write them down. What are 10 things that you can see that you bought? Do it right now. This is going to matter. This is going to matter. I see some of you in the green room staring at me. Look around you. I am not holding anything. Look around you right now. Write them down. Write them down. Write them down. 
see you, Josh, but write it down. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah's putting some on here. <laughs> uh, sure to this answer, to this question. Why not? Keep going. Keep going. All right. And while you're writing down to write, I'm going to read you the ones that I wrote down. So I wrote this down earlier in the day. Uh, I had a water bottle right here. And in uh, my water bottle is also a greens powder from Smart Pressed Juice. Smart Pressed Juice. It's my friend Annie's company. She's one of our members. So that's two. Water bottle and greens powder. A coffee cup, which had coffee in it. Also had MCT oil in it. Uh, a protein shake. That was what was in my water bottle earlier. Non-dairy milk, which was in the protein shake. A phone charger, right here. My podcast mic, right here. I have a grounding pad, which is underneath my computer. It's like an EMF blocker. My journal. I buy a fancy journal every year. It's leather bound and super fancy. Uh, a whiteboard right over here. I have a whiteboard that I recently got. Um, I have a wind chime on my door over here. And earlier I had a digestive enzyme supplement that I bought on Amazon. It was on my desk earlier. I hadn't put it away yet. Okay, so that's that's a few. I wrote those down in like five minutes. So I was just looking around. Okay, these are all the things around me that I bought. Put them, put some in the chat. What do you got? Will has protein powder, creatine, wireless headphones, vape pen, coffee. This person has nuts, whatever ramekin is. I don't know. Uh, charging cords. Cat food, dog kennel, laptop, hot wheels, tonic water, bulletproof coffee. Awesome. What else you got around you? person has one thing and it's a blanket they have an empty house all they have is one blanket this poor person needs help they definitely need to be on this class send help or blankets all right do you have at least five things got at least five things so in three to four minutes we just wrote down a bunch of products okay these are products that someone sold how do we know if something is a good product to sell or something that we shouldn't sell? There's a very simple way to look at a list and to say, oh, this would actually make sense to be a possible product. And this is how we do it. If you look at your list of hopefully at least 10 things and you write, can write down the type of person that would buy that, or the type of person that would prefer that product over other products, that's when we know we have a winner. That is like a, a, a bright green sign saying this is a go. If we can't answer the question of if, if there are a specific type of person that would buy this, that is a red light. Probably don't want to go there. So I will give you an example. The last idea that I gave to you was a digestive enzyme. Now, I it was a generic digestive enzyme. Um, I don't even remember why I bought it, but I wrote down what type of person might buy it. For example, there are specific digestive enzymes for people who have gluten intolerances or gluten allergies. There are specific digestive enzymes for that. So if I had that type of a digestive enzyme and it was specific to people with gluten intolerances, that would be a green light. If you had a digestive enzyme that was specific to people with IBS, that would be a green light. If you had a digestive enzyme that was specific to people who had a Dairy intolerance. Now, why is that the case? Because that's one product 
that could be marketed three different ways, which could theoretically give us three different products. That means that we're not selling a digestive enzyme. We're actually a digestive enzyme brand, a digestive enzyme supplement or a supplement company, a, a digestive enzyme company. So Sarah says, oh, okay, that is interesting. She just had the brain gasm. So what is so interesting about this, that is the difference between a product and a brand. A brand gets known for helping a specific person with a specific problem. When we can identify that within our list of things that we bought or are sitting around our house, when we can make it for a specific person, that means we have a winner. Another good way to come up with ideas for this is to look at your Amazon recent purchases. If you just look at what you've bought in the last 90 days and you think, okay, which of these did I buy because it was something specific that I wanted? Like if you buy, like for example, uh, er, yesterday, I refilled, uh, I rebought the vitamin D supplement that I take. I've been taking it for like five years. I couldn't tell you the brand. I don't know. I know I take it every day. I have my blood tested every quarter and my vitamin D levels come in great, right? So like, I don't, I don't care if that product, if that brand has other products. I don't know. I don't care. I buy it because I know it works. It's like $14. I don't, I don't care. Like my blood tests say it works. Okay, well, I'll take it. But I'm not eager to buy their next product. That's not a brand. That's a product. But if I look at some of the other things that I bought, like I bought uh, I bought a specific type of ketone ester from a brand that is interesting. I bought, that says something about me. I preferred that brand. I preferred that product over the others. This is an interesting question. Would you consider someone a millionaire when they're making 83K a month or when they do a million in sales? When their net worth is a million dollars, that's when they're a millionaire. It's not about cash flow, it's about wealth. So if I were to look at, I'm just going to look at my Amazon history here. If I look at the things that I bought, had the vitamin D supplement. Oh, here you go. <laughs> I buy a lot of supplements on Amazon. My goodness. Um, I bought ketone esters. I bought low sugar snacks. Okay, I bought these specific. It was specific for somebody who avoids sugar, somebody who eats a high protein diet. This is said something about me. It's for a specific person. Okay, so when you can identify the person that buys something, we now have... A product that's a it's a green light that's a go. Now, uh, trivia question for you: What about coffee? Is coffee a good product to sell? <laughs> Haley listens to a lot of my content. I'm so impressed. All right, <laughs> Tyler Burnett listens to my content. So some, some of you are very familiar with what I'm going to say next. Is coffee a good product to sell? Well, it's a big market. That's good. It's a growing market. That's good. Aha, Will. Go Will. Oh, Will. Good, good, good work, Will. Will says, it depends on whether it fits with your audience. Can you name the person that buys that type of coffee. Folgers is coffee for people who don't really like coffee, right? That's, that's Folgers. But you have Black Rifle Coffee, which is for gun-toting Republicans. You have Bulletproof Coffee, which is for mold-free biohackers or something. You have Starbucks, which is coffee for snobby people. I drink Starbucks, by the way. You have um, Whole Foods, which is for 
I don't know. That's probably what's in my coffee maker, by the way. So if you have a specific person that buys that coffee, then it can be a great product to sell. Black Rifle Coffee is a billion dollar company. It's worth over a billion dollars. Here's a, this is a great example. Pratik puts a really good example. There's mud water. This is this perfect example. Thank you for saying this. Mud water is a really fast growing business, which is a low caffeine coffee alternative, which is marketed to people who are trying to quit coffee. That's a specific person. And that company has done extremely well. When you can identify the person, you've got a product that will win. Most people to try, try to figure out what product to sell. The real hack is to identify the person. And then does that person want this product? And can I launch other products to this person? That's how we know if we have a winner. So let's review real quick. Let's review. The two steps to building wealth are starting a profitable business and investing the profits for the long term. It's not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep. If all you did was invest $541 a month into the S&P 500 for 30 years, you'll probably be a millionaire. $541 a month. I know you don't want to wait 30 years, so we're going to put in more than $541. We want to get there faster, so we do that by starting a business that produces profit. The best business to start is through product creation. That's according to Tim Ferriss. If we build a product around a specific person, that's how we know we have a winner. And all we need to do is get a product to 25 sales a day. And we do that by sp speaking directly to a specific type of person. An example, if you want to look up a case study that I did with one of my students, look up the interview that I did with our student named Alicia. And Alicia sold a water bottle. Now, is a water bottle a good product to sell? Usually not. Most people who follow my work would say, no, that's not a good product to sell. So what Alicia did is she picked a person to target and she just started targeting that person and speaking to that person. And then she sold them water bottles. And as a result, her business skyrocketed. She ended up selling that for several million dollars, selling water bottles. So she went after the person first, and then she went and sold them water bottles. What type of person would buy a water bottle? Let me go out and target them, and I'll sell them my water bottle. That's the hack. That's the difference. If you can identify the person, we can get in front of that person, and we can do that in free ways, in cheap ways, in easy ways to be able to do that. So I've given you the road to 1 million. And I want to share with you, I want to actually go into Q&A and work with some of you who have done the homework that I've assigned leading up to this class. But before I do that, let me share with you the number one reason why people will fail. So I just gave you the plan. If you do it, pretty good chance you're going to become a millionaire. The number one reason why you will fail is because you will try to do it alone. You will try to do it on your own. You will wonder in your head a hundred times, is this the right thing or this right thing is now the right time? Or is next week the right time? Maybe next, maybe when I'm 90 is the right time. And you will listen to the doubtful thoughts of your peers rather than changing your peer group that say making a million dollars is easy and simple and straightforward and it's actually pretty normal. If you're around a bunch of people that say it's normal and they're on the path to do it, you will be thinking those thoughts. You'll have a 10 out of 10 belief and you'll continue down the plan. So if you would like my help, in actually going down the road to a million, I would like to invite you to a new community that I have started called the Road to One Million. 
The Road to One Million is a community that helps entrepreneurs get off the ground and into the game so that you can start marching towards a million dollar net worth. Now, next week, starting on Monday, we're going to be going through my most popular training. It's called Five Days to Seven Figures. It's a five day live class. I've, I've actually sold over $100,000 worth of this class, and I'm giving it away for free for people who want to test drive this new experimental community. So this class is five days. On day one, we're going to go over the million-dollar model. We're going to cover how four products at 25 sales a day at a $30 price point. It's a million-dollar business, and we'll talk about how to think about going after that. On day two, we're going to choose your market and your person and show you how to get in front of them so that you can have all the sales that you could ever handle. On the third day, we're going to talk about which products to sell. We're going to talk about getting them made and how you know which product you should sell as well as what your follow-up product should be. On day four, we're going to cover how to get to 25 sales a day in very predictable ways that anyone can do, even if you don't have a marketing budget. And on day five, we're going to go through a step-by-step -step plan to getting to $10,000 a, a month and beyond so that you actually have a plan that you can execute that you can feel confident in. Uh, the course, again, usually costs $97. I've sold over 1,000 units of it, so it's made me over $100,000. But I'm giving it – I've never done this before. I'm giving it away for free if you want to test drive a new community. And uh, test driving that community is going to cost you 100 cents. So if you would like to do this, if you want to test drive this, work closely with me for five days. It'll cost you a whole dollar. The link is capital. That's not right. It's capitalism.com slash road. Capitalism.com slash road. So that takes you to an ugly page where you can give me a dollar. Next week, we're going to go through this class. We're going to have homework reviews. My team has offered to do one-on-ones with people who go through this and actually review your work and give you feedback. And there's also going to be a community where I'm going to be hosting lives and helping you with your plan. And I'll be doing other classes as well as we go through. If you like it after 30 days, it's $97 a month, which is by far the cheapest offering that I have. But you can test drive it and go through the whole class for a dollar at capitalism.com slash road. Now, one more thing before we go to live q and I would like, since you've actually stuck around for this whole thing, I want to give you one thing for free as a thank you for being here. I am putting together a free class right now. This class is also called The Road to One Million. It's going to be the thing that I give away for free that is like shock and awe. I can't believe this was free that will give people a taste of working with us and then encourage us to join this new community. And this class is going to cover all of what we went through in this class together and drip it over 30 days with actionable steps to do every single day to get you thinking about investing long-term, to think about mindset, to start shifting your beliefs, to start coming up with ideas and every day there's a lesson that will just turn the dial a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit further. Now the class is not, the, the free course is not ready yet, but I wanted to invite you to be first in line for this. And I'll email you out as soon as it's ready. This is a free course called The Road to One Million and you can sign up at capitalism.com slash million. So this is a 30 day course, it's free. And every day there's an assignment. And if you do it, you're going to be well on the road to 1 million. So I'll give you 10 seconds to write that down or to go over there. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to turn it over to those of you who are in the green room. I am going to look at your homework review. So just so you know, I am going to be looking up the homework that you submitted. And just so you know, the people that I'll be taking on live have submitted some form of homework review by doing the five-day challenge, which I just spoke about. I'm going to look at their homework as they're talking to me so that I can give you actual feedback on what you submitted, on the decisions that you made, so I can give you real-time feedback on your idea and I can tell you if it has legs or if you should change something. So Josh, I'm going to start with you first. Mr. Valentin, I'm going to come to you first since you... <laughs> 
You said you wanted to be first in line as soon as this community was ready. I will honor that by making you first in line here in the green room. So I'm bringing you on in three, two, one. What's up, old friend? How the heck are you? What's going on, Ryan? Dude, it's great been a hot you. second. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's great to see you too, man. I, I've been Dude. enjoying your, your recent TikToks. Thank you for tagging me in them. I appreciate you, man. You'll see a, you'll see a tag of yours in probably every other podcast. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> okay, I'll allow it. There, What's up, uh, man? Um, did you yeah, submit no. homework? Can I look you up? Yeah, you should be able to. And if not, I have links I got and you. shenanigans. I cool. Cool. Tell me a bit about your idea and how it can help. Yeah. So I have, um, I'm trying to figure out how to balance my time between two, but essentially the business that I'm going to be launching is with an influencer who does, uh, like filmmaking content and they do 30 shots in 30 days and they, um, like want to inspire people to take those 30 shots. He's grown 340,000 people over the past six months. Does not know anything about business. Um, Wait, and I, 340,000, what was uh, that? William H Baker is the oh, content this, creator. This is like a partner on it. Yes. Yeah, and when you say 340,000, is this people that follow oh, his followers work? on Instagram? Yeah. Hot damn. Okay. And he yeah. has a 16% engagement rate, which has been awesome. Fantastic. Um, and these are all video creators. They're all content creators who, and mm. he, here's my person, my who you're going to love me. I'm trying to get real specific. I'm not do, serving filmmakers. I'm serving filmmakers who are tired of analysis paralysis and getting stuck in tutorial land and getting stuck in gear acquisition syndrome. That specific person. Okay, what do you mean by gear acquisition center? Is this person who just buys piece after piece after piece? I am going to make my film once I get my A7S. Once I get my <laughs> okay. red, yeah, you know, I'm going to get make my film once I get my Airy Alexa Mini for 60 grand, you know, just okay. stuck in that that cycle. And so what I love about Will's content is um, I made 30 shots over the past seven years, did film, did the whole like, uh, we did Home Depot commercials for 100 grand and then made not that much money off of it. Very weird. Yeah. Um, and he did essentially the same amount of work as I did in 30 days. And we both have grown very similarly by him taking massive amounts of action, doing very simple things and me doing it over the, um, the last seven years. So um, I, I, I want to address your, your, your question please. specifically, but I want to give you a, a takeaway that I think will really help you. Yeah. When you're talking about your market and your person, you want to be specific enough to target them. Yes. But we don't want to be specific enough where we start cutting off other people that would really benefit from what we're trying to do. So in my opinion, video creators and or just content creators is specific enough to be able to start serving them. That's cool. So, That's cool. so when you start saying things like, I want to serve the person who's got gear analysis syndrome, that's a problem on that person's journey, not a specific person. Okay. That's really See helpful. See what I'm saying? Yeah. I so oh, so what would be the product line that you would launch to the content creator or the video creator? The thought is, and we're, we're kind of going to just take information from his audience. Um, we're pulling them over to a hopper and we're going to start asking them what problems is we want to make products that do whatever it takes, like whatever product helps them take 30 shots, whether that's in a year or in a month. Okay. Um, and so whatever that could be, that could be LUTs, that could be uh, a planner, that and LUTs being color guides, um, that could be a planner for 30 shots, that could be an inspiration book. Um, the product that we are looking at, because I have experience in this, is I, uh, I have a bunch of connections with um, like famous cinematographers that would do an hour teaching for, um, for like 500 bucks. And we would essentially, instead of it being a course, like every other product, it would be, here's an hour, here's 30 of their shots. They teach you how to do it. If you go do it, we will give you some kind of reward. Um, and I, I went through challenges like that. So some kind of gamified process. I, I mean, then, honestly, the easiest way that you could do yeah, this yeah. is you have, you have a, a Facebook group and you might call it like the first 30 shots. Yeah. And uh, you might have a course that goes along with it and it costs... 200 bucks and it's uh how fast could somebody do 30 shots like what would be a um, reasonable amount of time we're working on that but he did it in 30 days so he did a shot a day um okay. and then we we're trying to figure out do we want people to be able to do 30 shots over a year a month or like a week and okay. are those different courses and products i don't i don't know so i i would one way you could do it i'm not saying this is what you should do but one way you could do it is you have a 200 first 30 shots 
And when they do the work and submit it, they get a refund. I have, Interesting. I have built raving fans doing this. Like if you do the work and you submit it, you get a full refund. And that person is like, holy shit, you just served the crap out of me and you gave me my money back. That's cool. I, like what else you got? That's really, really cool. And, and you could then have the, the, like a community where you're, where you're talking about, all right, like the next part for you is getting clients. Like, how are you going to yeah. get more clients? And I'd be, and we have, what's your partner's name? William? William. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you and William have a community that's 200 bucks a month. That's about client getting and building a hundred thousand dollar business. Out of yep. This. Yep. Well, that's a sweet offering, right? Yeah. So I have, I have the Facebook group. I have the course that's free. You just got to do the work. Mm. And if you'd like, we can put you into our $200 a month or whatever you decide to charge for it class on building a six figure business as a content creator or a video creator. Yes. That's well, and, and once a month you interview somebody who's got a six figure business and that becomes part of the podcast. I mean, that, that will, that will fly. <laughs> that will so work. What we, and this is the pushback I need is I think our audience is hobbyists. His, his existing audience is like very much not like trying to build a business. They just want to like be noticed. They okay. want to not get stuck. And so my thought is, are we like, should we try and serve a more um, like gig economy space, which I've been in, or should we serve his like very engaged um, audience of like hobbyists that want, don't necessarily want to make money, but they want to get like get unstuck, like start making more fun things, become a TikTok star, blah, blah, blah. Impress yeah, I, I mean, the person who wants, the person who has a business or financial incentive is going to spend more money. Yeah, push that, push that. So that can be your, your the way that you monetize this. Copy. If you just have a heart for video creators and videographers and content creators, then that is your, like that's your focus. You serve that person with the first 30 shots, what gear you need. That's like, that's a great audience to serve. And the ones that will pay you the most are the ones that want to have viral content, want to build a business out of this, want to be high paid photographers. And those can be your product offerings. I think Copy. if you simplify the business to that, you have, you know, you've got a multi six figure business in about six months. Yeah. That's the desire. Um, and, and it's interesting. We want to sell it in 12. Like I actually am ready to move what on. What do you mean film. you want to sell it in 12? I don't, I don't, neither of us necessarily want to stay in this audience. Like I actually want to move on to just duplicating this process with influencers. That's way more fun to me than serving filmmakers for the next okay, five years. Tell, tell me what you mean you want to duplicate this process with influencers. So this, I met this guy three months ago. Um, I just reached out to him. I have 20 interviews with influencers who are similar to him in different uh, niches. And we're just talking about this idea. And I want to learn how to do this. My like get excited inside of me, like as a child is like fun ways to serve people that you're making stuff for. Like basically you for influencers, um, for content creators. That's basically just being straight for five years of following you. I've just wanted to be a thicker version of you. Um, that's, that's been my dream. <laughs> um, I, I love working with influencers too. So well, um, like here, 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 so here's yeah. the thing. Um, uh, do you go by your last name now, by the way? It's it, there's two, every pastor's name is Josh. So I go by <laughs> <the last> name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's obnoxious. Um, <laughs> when I was going to school to be a pastor, I almost had to change my name to Josh in order to be, um, it's a fax. Um, Look, both of, both of these will work. Yeah. You know, I, 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 the reason I asked you about selling the business is you don't want to be in a hurry to go mm. have a quick flip. Okay. Like if you're like, if you're like, look, even medium, to medium term, I want to be serving influencers, then you need to go do that. But like your, that. your homework yeah. submission was all about this brand that serves content creators and uh, doing the, the first 30 shoots and that will work too. Yeah. I think I think the thing that you need to sort of own is that this process works, you're ready to build it out and whatever you choose given your full focus will be a successful and profitable business because you're ready. Yeah.
Yeah, a hundred percent. That's that's and I probably so I'll be joining the one percent in like uh, a couple of weeks. So excited. We'll Sweet. hang out. If there's a world where I can make it to capitalism conference, I'll scam someone for it. But um, I've been, yeah, <laughs> I know I was, it's in my podcast episode. If you watch it, my brother was like, bro, just tell Ryan to give you a ticket. I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> but needing the push to figure out that focus. What I want is to learn how to do this and then do this with different kinds of content creators. Cause I love the starting process okay, and I so love different kinds of people. My advice, and then I'm going to move on. This would be my yeah. advice to you. Thank you. I, I think you're so ready to have a business that serves content creators and videographers. It, like that would be really hard to screw up. And like right. you've, yes. you've wanted yes. to have your side gig for a long time. Build that out with the intention that this is going to be the model that proves that you can do this. Yes. But don't do it with this idea that you're going to go sell it in 12 months. No, cool. like that's really helpful. Please don't do that. You, I mean, you might say that once you reach profitability of two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you want to hire somebody to replace you. Mm. But don't be in this hurry of like, I'm going to go make my million, get out. This is actually a great business for you, even if it was small. It will pay for your life, so you're perfectly at choice, and yeah. you can be at choice to choose those two or three influencers that you partner with over the next few years that you get to do this with. But this opportunity is right in front of you. Go attack it and attract the people who are content creators who have really big audiences and you'll be at total choice of who you work with. Just don't That's be you. in a rush to go flip something. This is a great business idea for you. Cool. That's really, really helpful. Thank you so much, Ryan. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you. Later, Gator. Okay. I want to go to the most active person on the thread and it was Haley Barrett. Special thanks for laughing at all my jokes. I'm coming to you in three, two, one. Hi, Haley. How are you? Hey, Ryan. How are you? Good. Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Okay. So, all right. So I'm a therapist and I'm moving over into coaching world. I'm giving up my licenses finally. Um, I do a lot of things that are revolved around like healing and, uh, you know, just everything health. And so I feel like a lot what of- What type of healing and what type of therapy? Just so I know. Mental health. Yep. So mental and, health and trauma. Uh, okay, I did so trauma healing and trauma therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I actually am developing a program. Are you, are you the gal that interprets dreams? I do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I remember, okay. I remember our DMs now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I have a huge program being built uh, on mental health, but I feel like I want to get into more passion projects and I really want to get into products that make me happy and also serve populations. And I, I feel yeah. like- So are you, are you suggesting that the work that you do now doesn't light that fire right now? Oh, it does, it does. But okay, I feel so like can you spec specify what you, what is the difference between what you're doing now and you know what makes you happy? I feel like I serve so many people in that capacity, but I also wanna serve more on a larger scale. And I feel like yeah. there's only one of me and I do a lot of really good work and I heal people really fast. I just want to kind of expand on that and expand on things that, um, that are beyond kind of the mental health realm, I guess, because I'm also a combat veteran um, and I really love fitness. I work um, out a lot. And then I also- so I, I guess what I'm getting at is, do you want the brand to be around healing trauma? Or are you looking for more something that scratches a different itch so that you have a different balance? I think Haley Barrett brand is all about all wellness. So like CBD and- I got you. Okay. Okay. And that actually was a very helpful distinction. Sorry. So, so, so I, want, I, want you to, I want you to notice something, Haley. There is something different about talking about trauma and talking about wellness. Mm-hmm. So one of the things, if you go through the five-day challenge that you'll hear me talk about is the hero's journey. You are, your job is to support people who are on a journey. Mm -hmm. And in your case, someone who is on a wellness journey, one of the stops along their way will be addressing trauma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not their whole journey. Right, right. It's part of the journey. And so if you have resources to help that person on that part of their journey, that unlocks the next step. Okay, what do I do now? What is the next part of my journey? And it's 
filling now. Okay. Now I'm addressing mental health, which is things like fitness and my body and my relationships and mm -hmm. the thoughts I think and how I spend my time and my satisfaction, right? That, so it, they're, they're, they serve each other, but it's a broader journey that I'm just going to address what happened when I was 11. It's yes. much broader than that. So I just wanted to, I wanted to give you that context because I'm guessing that it, a lot of times people are in your position, they feel like they're pulled in two different directions, but in your case, it's actually one direction because it's the same journey. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I love that. And as a therapist, we, we really are super um, tunnel visioned in that way. Huh? And I'm, I'm trying to expand out of that too. Yeah. So wellness. So I was thinking about like a bunch of products of like CBD and, and blah, 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 fitness. And then even like, but I think I want to hyper-focus on one because I feel like there's so much I do already and so much that I want to do. So, I, so how can I help Haley? So I guess my question is where do I find a manufacturer for a, a product line of like, so fitness because I'm combat veteran, because it's within this realm, I want like concealed carry fitness things that actually fit. Um, and I'm smaller build and it's hard for me to find fitness gear that actually fits that can actually conceal. So, for you. Haley, how many manufacturers have you spoken to? None. There you go. Like, I don't even know where to start with that. You start with this. There's this really great website called uh, Jugle. Jugle. It's spelled uh, G O O G L E. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, what you'll do is you'll start out broad, and you'll say, and th these are these are in your members area right now. We're like with some scripts to open up conversations, and they often sound something like, "Hi, my name's Haley. I'm starting a brand about X. I'm looking for a manufacturer that can do this. Can you tell me a little bit about where your facility specializes?" Okay. So you just start having those types of conversations. If you, if you wanted to, if you felt a little intimidated about that, you could say, I'm representing a brand that does this of this and this and is looking for a new manufacturer. Can you tell me who the best person to talk to about that would be? Okay. And you just listen to like, what do you do? What do you specialize in? Okay. Well, I'm think uh, we're thinking about starting a product that looks like this. Do you, or does someone else in the business specialize in this? And you just start seeing what's possible, right? It's, now, it's one thing to say, how do I find a manufacturer that sells headphones that are blue that come in a, so, like, describing it perfectly? How do I find that versus how do I find the manufacturers that make headphones? Now, I'm going to go have conversations with three of them and find out what they can do. Mm. And you'll be surprised at how many people do custom things and work with people specifically. And some people... Some people are better on the price point, but others are better on communication. And some people do custom designs and you'll start to see, oh, okay, this is possible and this is possible and this is possible. And you don't need to buy a darn thing from anybody. You just got to find out what people can do. So go have three to five conversations with people on that website called Jugle and you'll, <laughs> you'll discover a, at least a little bit of what's possible. That's a lot better than saying, how do I find a manufacturer that does exactly what I want to do? Because the person who does exactly what you want to do is out there. You just haven't talked to anybody yet. Right, right. I did talk to a couple of the owners of fitness lines. And I was like, hey, how do you like customize things into yeah. this? And they're like, I have no idea because concealed carry is such a, like a, a specific thing where you're going to have to like test out certain things so and make sure that what, it actually if again if you go through the five-day challenge one of the things i'll encourage you to do is come up with four products not just one okay and then and then go have conversations and see like all right i can do the exact perfect product that i want to do but i need forty thousand dollars to place an order so let's skip that for now i can always come back to that oh look there's this product that you have sitting on your shelf that is perfect for the person that i want to serve and you already white label it for people. So let me do an order of a hundred of those and start building the audience and get this launched. And now I've got something to sell while I build up my traffic and my exposure. Now I've got a brand that's in the game. I can come back to these other products later. So just like you don't want to stay super tunnel focused in therapy, don't stay super tunnel focused on your product line either. Okay. 
Awesome. Good to see you, Haley. Thanks. Nice to finally meet you. Yeah. All right. I'll see you on Instagram. Okay. See ya. All right. I'm going to go over to Skylar, who was waiting in the waiting room the longest. Congratulations, Skylar. I'm coming to you in three, two, one. Hey, Skylar. How are you? Here I am. Doing pretty good. How about yourself? Good. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Good to meet have you. you. Have you filled out a homework review that I can look at? Yeah, it should be on there. All right, cool. I see it. All right, so you want to target the people who have chill, who are have children with ADHD. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. All right, cool. Tell me a little bit about the the vision for this. Yeah. So, really, where I want to go with it is help this audience. So, I guess it all starts with kind of where they're at right now. You know, we all had the COVID thing that happened, and all these kids went home and, and there's been a lot of diagnosis of kids with ADHD over the past few years because parents are realizing, oh, wow, <laughs> you're not as easy to teach as I thought as they're homeschooling their kids. <laughs> um, <laughs> so where what's happening now, um, in the last four months, Adderall um, has been on a shortage as well as yeah. all alternatives to it. Yeah. So I want to be able to create a natural, not necessarily alternative, because I know that's probably a space you can't really. Lots of people do it. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen some ads on Facebook ads library yeah. about that though, but I wouldn't want to be able to empower parents to be able to show up for their kids, um, to be able to provide what they need. So basically I want to help naturally reduce those symptoms for children, but also help the parent along the way. I like this Managing a lot. their stress so they can help regulate. Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. Great. So, so I'm looking at the product lines that you listed in here. Mm -hmm. So, um, a natural focus supplement for their kids, a natural calming supplement, natural sleep supplement and a natural stress and anxiety supplement for themselves. I just want, sometimes you just need to hear these. I really like these ideas. Okay. So I, I just want to compliment. These are very thoughtful ideas for this person. And you are doing a really good job of identifying person before product. Uh, you wouldn't, Skylar, you wouldn't believe I have to pound it into the heads of people Choose a person before your product. Because if you try to choose a product and then retrofit it to a person, that's really hard. So I just want to honor those are really four, those are four really good choices for the person that you're trying to serve. That's really good work. Awesome. Thank you. Where do you need some help? Um, I think part of it was validation. And I think you just gave me that pretty well. So thank you. Um, the other piece of it is just really understanding where to position my brand as far as taking it to and the kind of the marketing language to take to them. Um, since the parent is the hero, kind of in the hero's journey, do I serve them best by really focusing on just providing the most help for their kids? Or do I try to do help both the kids as well as the parent? Because I, I guess I, my people, personal recommendation would be that you serve mm -hmm. the, the parent by focusing on the kids. Now I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you a, a story. I'm not a medical expert or a therapist or anything. Don't take my advice on anything. I'm an idiot that you follow on the internet. But I once saw a, a friend of mine who had, um, had a blended family. So he had inherited a couple of stepkids, one of whom had autism. And he went really deep down the, the rabbit hole of, how like could autism be lessened or healed? And he was of the belief that you could do it with diet. Now, I don't know if that's true. I don't like, I know nothing about that, but he was pretty adamant that he believed this and that his stepson was getting better as a result of changing their diet. I don't know what diet he did, but he was pretty adamant that his stepson was getting better as a result of changing their diet. So he was super passionate about being plugged into groups and helping other parents of autistic kids and encouraging them to make these changes, right? There were groups specific to diets for serving the parents of autistic kids. Similarly, I have a friend, his name's Andy. He has a son who had brain surgery and had to have part of his brain removed. Apparently, I didn't know this, but you can have half your brain removed and still be functional, which is crazy. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, that's nuts. Right? Your brain has six centers of consciousness. This is nuts. So anyway, um, his son had to go medically on a keto diet. Medi like medically had to do it, not for weight loss, but because of to reduce the seizures that he was having. And 
Um, I was super keto at the time. So I was like telling him all the products that I bought, right? But I was serving the parent, not the kid and serving the parent about the kid. So the reason I'm telling you this is because the parents are the market, not the kid in both of those cases. And both of those were addressing it with food and dietary lifestyle, change, uh, lifestyle changes. So if you believe that ADHD can also be addressed with food and lifestyle, it widens the base of products that you could sell to that person. So that's something you can add to your list. But the, the, so that's a long answer to your question. Serve the parent who is researching solutions for their kids. Perfect. Thank you. That's super helpful because that, that was where my mind was going was because ADHD kids, I have a, my child's ADHD and they tend to only want to eat specific things and they're pretty stubborn with it. I know all kids are that way, but it's very specific. Yeah. And being able to do things like launch cereals or snacks that are, don't have the items in it that, that make the symptoms worse and totally I want to be able to serve them that way. So, I mean, it would be very easy and profitable and of great service to people to build an audience in that market. Okay. And I mean, and I mean, your ads and your messaging are so simple. It's like, here's my kid before, here's my kid after. Here are the four things we changed. Download it here. Here's our Facebook group. Sign up for our email list. I mean, that that is spec that's it's such a direct offer with such a pain point. And you're thinking about this well, you have my full blessing to build this brand. Awesome. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Skylar. Good work. Good to meet you. Thanks. All right. Jason asked a really good question. He says, where, are, where is this group that we are clearly not inside of to get access to the Q&A? Um, it is the road to 1 million. So that is uh, the road to 1 million is at capitalism.com slash road. It's expensive. It costs a dollar. Cost a dollar for your first 30 days. I don't know if you can swing that. You know, that's that's like one carbonated water. If you can give up one carbonated carbonated water this month, I can help you build a million dollar business. If you think that's worth it, go over to capitalism.com slash road. All right, I'm gonna go to Kelsey Orcut. I'm coming to you in three, two, one. Hi, Kelsey. How are you? Hi, Ryan. I'm good. Nice to meet I'm you. I'm your favorite, so I'm great. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, do you have a homework review submitted? Um, I just submitted it, I think. Um, so I, I don't I know if you two have minutes ago. Very good. Access. <laughs> so you're going to serve female casual campers. Tell me about that. Yeah. So it's all about women who want to reconnect, reconnect with nature, get outside, get out of that day to day, like scrolling Facebook, you know, doing things that aren't making them feel great. And basically reconnect with themselves, reconnect with other women, reconnect with nature, and kind of just like have that exuberant, joy-filled life that, yeah. they, that they want. Yeah, I, I, I actually think, I think I did a video late last year in which I said this was one of my favorite markets for 2023 is brands that make it easy to get outside. So yeah. I, yeah. I like the direction of this. Now, did you hear me say that with, with Josh, that you want to be specific enough to identify the person, but not so specific that we start to isolate people. Did you hear that? Yeah. Is there a reason why you want it to be female campers? Because campers is broad enough to have a nice audience. So is there a reason you want to go female? Mostly because I've identified my pain point in that, like I would love to do solo camping, but it's not something that I'm comfortable with. Like just for safety reasons, it's obviously a bigger issue for women. Um, and I think there's more of a lack of women, you know, getting outside and having, being okay. encouraged to like be outside. Great. Makes sense to me. So tell me a little bit about the vision for this brand and where you might be stuck and I'll try my best to help. Yeah. So the way that I see it is being kind of a, a luxury aesthetic camping gear brand. So not necessarily anything for the hardcore campers. It's not going to be carbon fiber. It's not going to be this high tech. It's going to be more about making it a getaway, a luxury experience that you enjoy. Um, I created a, a little tagline and I said, um, I have to go back to it. Connecting with nature doesn't have to mean roughing it. So, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. So, um, 
yeah so Haley said like glamping yeah so it's similar to that just not at like you know a glamping resort it's something that like you can go do with a group of your friends great but you also want to like shoot it for TikTok and have this like beautiful aesthetic campground that everybody's gonna be like wow I wish I was there you know so I just I just want to highlight something so Haley is in the comments on here and she talked she said I love this and I'll I'll go with Kelsey now the reason I'm saying this some of you might be familiar with my content enough to know that I recommend documenting the journey. Documenting the journey means sharing your ideas, sharing the prototypes you get, talking about where you want to go, talk about the challenges you're running into. And every time you do this, you run into people that you connect with that want to support the brand or become customers. So we've been talking for approximately 90 seconds and we have you know a small audience here probably about the same amount of people that you would get exposure to if you were to post something on Instagram or Facebook and you have a customer and a raving fan. So if you did that every day as you built an audience, that's how things start to snowball. So I just wanted to highlight, this is an example of why it's so important to document the process. Now, I'm curious, you, you put your product on here. You said tent, sleeping bag, lantern, and camping chair, could you do those in a way that felt more glamp-like, more luxury? And how would you do that? So my one concern right off the bat was not going too wild with creating my own products, kind of like you were just saying, um, uh, with Haley, actually. And so I was thinking about just how can I take products that are already exist and maybe just make them a little more aesthetic, like, you know, change the colors, whatever that looks like, maybe yep. with a sleeping mat, make it a little bit thicker, make it, you know, just like these little tiny modifications. Um, so adding little, little bits of luxury before I can go full scale into creating nice. like these specific products. I mean, I, I think your, your brand is, has a very clear person, a very clear product line. Is there any place where you stuck or do you need some help or do you just want the endorsement from me that you should go and do this? <laughs> well, I'll take that too. But um, the place where I'm stuck is thinking about my first product. Okay. Because I do want to launch on Kickstarter. Um, I think that the community will really rally behind it. I mean, like you, like Kaylee is already all about it. So I'm excited. You're going to be my first <laughs> Facebook group um, member. But um I just don't know how to create kind of that like flagship product that'll get people excited, but it won't have too high of a barrier to entry. Yeah. Like, you know, a tent is expensive. So like starting at that $30 price point, but still has enough excitement that people will want to buy in. Well, $30 is not a recommendation. It's just a formula. Like I, I, I love premium products. Okay. I love them. You get the most raving fans with premium products. So don't let price be the barrier to entry if you know that you can stand out in this market. So there are two ways to think about what should be your first product. The first is looking at a gateway product. A gateway product is what does someone buy first that is their, their gateway into buying more things. So in your case, it's probably a tent. Yeah. Unless you're thinking about it like, well, most people already have a tent the way that they're going to break into this market is that they're going to buy an, a fancy sleeping bag that doesn't feel like you're sleeping on the ground. It has extra padding underneath. So it's actually a much more enjoyable experience to sleep outside. Mm -hmm. that, that is a, a cool gateway product. The second way to look at it is where can I make a simple but noticeable modification to a common product that gives me an edge that stands out from everybody else? Like my, the, the tent that you make is somehow luxurious because it has carpet in it. You know, I don't know. Right. Or, um, the example that I gave with the sleeping bag is actually a pretty effective one of what makes it stand out in the marketplace. So it's one of those two, either the first thing that someone buys or it makes it different in the marketplace. And if you remove the restriction of it being $30 and just thinking about how do I create a great high-end product? I think this is a, that'd be a great thing to launch on Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. I actually really like the idea of like a, a padded sleeping bag. Like if you could combine the the sleeping pad and the sleeping bag. Like, sure. So there if we you, go. You are welcome to steal that one. There's a million dollar <laughs> breakthrough today. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Kelsey. Great to see you. Great to see you. All right, let's do 
at least one more. I'm coming to Tyler next. Tyler, I'm coming to you in three, two, one. What's up, Tyler? How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Tell me about your brand. Do you have a homework submission I can look up? Uh, Yes, it should be on there. Okay, great. Cool. The hobbyists with valuable equipment they want to protect? Yeah. Uh, All right, great. Tell me about this idea. Yeah, so that's kind of my gateway uh, into this. So I'm developing a uh, case insert uh, that's reusable. So it's really just a proprietary technology that I'm making that I can transfer into a bunch of different customer segments. Um, but the easiest way that I can think to get into that is through gun owners, uh, just because they typically are going to have multiple different types of cases. And this is a product that they use. Um, so that, that was one of my questions, honestly, that I wanted to get on here for. Um, I'm going to serve a lot of different customer segments, and I don't know what is the easiest way to transfer from one to the next, because obviously there's a, there's a big difference between a gun owner and then also like a photography student in like a liberal arts college. And then also like whenever I get into home storage, uh, like objects, I mean, that, that could be just a, a soccer mom that's putting up her Christmas decorations. Yeah. So, so this is a great question. I get it all the time. And, and this is the punchline. Okay. As soon as you choose one of them, mm-hmm. you'll know exactly what the next product that person buys is. Right. If you choose a different person, they're going to choose a completely different set of products that they might buy as second, third, or fourth. Right. So what you want to create is the brand that serves that person on their journey. And so whichever one you pick out of those three different, very different markets, you just choose the person that you are excited to serve on their entire journey. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, so there's there's actually a, a a theory in marketing. It's called diffusion theory, and it's just the bell curve of distribution of a product. In every product that gets out to the masses, it starts with a group of excited early adopters, and those early adopters are the ones who wait in line to buy the iPhone. They're the ones that are bragging about how cool their iPhone is. They're the early adopters because they're tech geeks or because because they want to show off or whatever it is. And they bring it to the other communities. So your job is to pick the group that you're both excited to serve that's also excited about being served. And if you do that well, they will diffuse into the other markets and they'll go out and get them for you. But you got to pick that group of people that are most excitable at the beginning. Gotcha. Okay. Who, who is that out of the options that you chose that you said to me? Uh, yeah. So gun owners is pretty much where I'm going to start. Great. So outdoor adventure hobbyist. Um, so are you familiar with Pelican brand, like hard side of cases? I, I'm not, you'll have to forgive me. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so, I mean, there are hard sided cases like clamshell cases uh, that okay. you can use for firearms, uh, like drones, heavy equipment, stuff like that, like high end technology. So, this is going to be kind of a one and done kind of purchase. So, you're not going to be, I mean, it's a higher end item. So, you're going to buy it once and you're going to keep it forever. Okay, um, but that person buys many things in their journey, correct? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And my goal is to be an adaptable storage and organization solutions company. So, I mean, it is very broad, but I do plan on starting with, like I said, the gun owners and people who really value like their so, collection. So be bodies. careful there, Tyler, to say, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to be, how do you say it, an organization company? Uh, yeah, so it's adaptable organization solutions. Is what what does that about. mean? So the insert that I've created is basically... So like uh, if you get a hard side of case, typically it comes with a foam insert where you can pick out the little grids and then you can put your item in there. Well, I've created one that you can reuse over and over again. So as you're, so say if you have a start taking, being a photographer. uh, So whenever you start out, you only have like a single lens in your camera. As you go on, you add a tripod. And then as you go on, you add additional lenses. Uh, So for that person, if you were to use this type of case, you'd have to replace that insert over and over and over again. Okay. So so do you want to create more products like that or do you want to serve gun owners? So that I'm I'm going to adapt that technology to a bunch of different things because that could also serve like say people who own tools and things like that. Um, my first 
venture is going to be in like say hard side of cases, but then I've also got a drawer and like a toolbox drawer insert. Uh, so I would go from there and then also uh, like storage totes, like I said, for like your Christmas decorations, things like that. So okay. Anybody that, go ahead. Yeah. So, so the challenge for you, I, I now understand what you're asking. So you, you're really, you're doing the product first and then choosing, yeah. you're retrofitting it for person. Right. I, I want you to think about the person first. Right. So if it's gun owners, can we broaden that to it's actually more like conservative families? Right. Okay. Now with conservative families, are there four products that they might buy that my brand is in service to? Gotcha. That's a little bit. That's, it's a little bit broader on person, but it gives you the same type of languaging that you're going to use mm -hmm. to target the gun owner, but you're going to be able to serve them along a journey because you don't really have a gun brand. Right. Yeah. And no, so, I, you don't, so, so you don't want to say you're serving gun owners. You want to say, right. who is it that I'm serving that's going to be on a journey? Mm -hmm. And then you go craft that customer journey where you're serving multiple products. For them. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Very good, Tyler. Good work. Yeah. And I'll be at Capcom. So I'll see you. Awesome. There. My yeah. man. We'll see you in April. All right. See ya. All right. See ya. All right. Real quick, just for a couple of minutes, I want to go to Michael, who's always in his car for some reason. I don't know why. Every time he's on a call, he's on his car. So, Michael, how are you? It's my quiet office. Okay. I'm doing well. Got how are you doing? Got it. Well, I saw you in your car and I'm like, I recognize that background. I want to talk to him. Tell me what's going on and how I can help. Well, I submitted my uh, homework. All right, good. Look it up. Good. What's your last name, Michael? Johnson. I found it. Cool. Oh, you submitted it today. Okay, great. So you're going to serve foodies. Tell me about it. Well, I have a uh, a CNE brand. It's a uh, it's, it's it's a hard to find multicultural seasonings. Is basically, and I'm I've started uh, working with Alicia and her and her. Uh, her course, I took yep. that course in the, the, the challenge. So I yep. want to challenge people to, uh, you know, try a different, different foods and recipes from different cultures. Sure. And my, the, the main struggle I'm having is, is the technical parts because, you know, it's easy to say, just go on here and do that. Well, it takes me hours. <laughs> so, um, my question would be, I, I, I think I need a content and or uh, maybe slash social media. Stop. Developer Stop. manager. Stop. Michael, what's your thing. first product? Uh, it's seasoning. Okay. Is it launched? I have I've had, I have uh, seven different, but I haven't launched it yet. Yeah, okay. I have. So so Mike Michael, this me. is this is the punchline. You can hire a social media person and a tech person. And hire somebody to help you with the challenge, and somebody, to, and somebody to help you with your ads. You can do all of that, or you can launch a product and get a customer. And I, I, I said earlier today that my goal is to get you off the fence and into the game. You can't do that if you can't take a sale. Your job right now is to make it as simple as possible for someone to give you money. For someone to buy something before you go on, before you hire a social media person, before you have a complicated content strategy, before you have a complicated advertising strategy, before you have a funnel, those are all ways to procrastinate the work of taking a sale. So my assignment for you is if you're happy with this product list that you made, that you have in your homework review, go get a prototype. And when you get a prototype, and you start sharing it with your Facebook group and you get feedback. Now you have people lined up ready to give you money and you go take yeah, a sale. I've already, and I've already got people. several bottles of each. I, Great. So you're saying maybe go on and put it on Amazon first. And I'm well, first of all, you go get feedback from the people who are in your challenge. You choose the one product that you would be most happy to bring to that audience. You go take a sale turn it into a few reviews. If you're, if you're intimidated by tech stuff, put it on Amazon where you have no tech to worry about at all. Go get some sales and reviews 
feedback, go all in on those customers and start serving them. And then we're starting to turn the dial. That will be a much better use of your next 90 days than going and perfecting your content strategy and figuring out the tech and doing all this. I want you to go take your first sale because your brain changes as soon as someone gives you money. Yeah, because it's it's like, oh, my webs or I had a website made and then Lisa said, just get a Shopify thing. So I did that. And it, then the Facebook group thing, it's like, it's not, it's not right. It's not, you know, I don't even want anyone I want, to see I want it. you to go take the <laughs> simplest action you can take that gets you ready to take a sale. Yeah. There's no yeah, was- right way. There's no best way. There's just moving forward or not. And right now you're in perfectionist mode of it has to be the right way. I want you to have something where somebody can give you a sale. Somebody can become a customer because if somebody becomes a customer and now you can serve them. If you can't, if you can't serve them, then we're just like buffering and like preparing and learning. And yeah, I'm just giving it away right now to people that I run into and everybody oh, seems great. To be okay with that's them. great. Now go, go get, take that feedback, choose the product that you're most happy with and go get it ready for sale. That's yeah, my they're even asking me, where can I buy it? I'm like, I'm not ready yet to sell it. Well, you're ready. <laughs> Go choose the one that you're most happy with and put it ready for sale. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. You're ready. You're, you're welcome, Michael. Good to see you. Good to see you too. All right, everyone. Let me give you one final nudge. If you would like to go through the five-day challenge where we're going to help you choose your first product, get your launch plan together, decide who you're going to serve and how you're going to get in front of them, get to $10,000 a month and build the business that is a product that you can scale over the next 12 months, go over to capitalism.com slash road. It's expensive. It's a dollar. And with that dollar is going to get you 30 days of access to our community. This class, which will be held live, we'll be doing homework reviews together, giving you clarity on your business. We're even going to do some one-on-ones with my team. And you can go grab that at capitalism.com slash road. I'd also like to invite you to be first in line to a free course that I am releasing called The Road to One Million. It's at capitalism.com slash million. It's not ready yet. It will be ready on March 15th, but I'll send you an email as soon as it's ready and you will be first in line for it. And that will give you daily tasks that you can accomplish that will put you on the road to one million. Thank you all for your attention this evening. I hope you enjoyed tonight as much as I enjoyed making it and sharing it with you. I hope to see you in either the free course or the road to 1 million or both. Have a great one, everybody. Take care.